Hey, welcome and hello, everybody. Welcome to the Texas RIAs. The Texas RIAs is the largest by far network of real estate investor associations in the great state of Texas with chapters in Austin, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio, over 100,000 members, participants, and attendees uh, dating all the way back to 2003. I'm one of the co-founders of the Texas RIAs. My name's Phil Grove. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of different things for you tonight. RIAs provide resources for real estate investors. What kind of resources? Money, deals, training, education, market data, et cetera. In fact, tonight we're going to start off with a market update. I'm going to tell you what's going on in the real estate market and share a bunch of data with you on what's going on in the marketplace. And we're going to break it down by city, talk about the state, and talk about even a forecast of where we think things are going uh, next. And, and by the way, this uh, data I'm going to be sharing with you is uh, mostly found in the Texas A&M School of Real Estate, a bunch of different online sources. We do post this to our social media. You're welcome to download it. Uh, I also want to preface this by saying we do not have an agenda here. We're not trying to convince you that the market is going up or down or sideways. We're not trying to sell you anything. Uh, we have no agenda. We have strategies for up markets and down markets and sideways markets. So we're going to give you the data. We're going to give you a forecast. And we're going to say, here's what you probably can do to make money and do what you want, right? Like, for example, the, the National Board of Realtors. We're not realtors, but the National Board of Realtors, every year for the last 20 years, if you ask them, what's going to happen the next year in real estate? What do they tell you? Oh, man, it's going up. It's always going up. There's different reasons, but it's always going up. Every year, the forecast is, is up, right? In some years, we tell you the forecast is down. In some years, it's flat. Some years, it's up, right? And we're going to tell you and give you the data. So let's do a market update and talk about what's going on in the market. So first things first, uh, what's the big story uh, with real estate? What, what happened over the last couple of years? Interest rates went up. Interest rates, they changed, right? They, 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 they went up. Okay, so interest rates went up. Okay, so let's talk about this, interest rates. Um, what do you think? Are interest rates high or low? High. High? Okay, well, let's do a survey. Who thinks interest rates are high? Raise your hand if you think interest rates are high. Who thinks interest rates are low? Raise your hand if you think interest rates are low. Okay, I got a couple lows and a lot of highs. I notice the guys that uh, say interest rates are low have uh, grayer hair than the guys who say interest rates are There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. 1981, interest rates on mortgages got all the way up to, to 18%. You think interest rates are high compared to 18%? Money is practically free. Okay, so I started investing in real estate in 2003. I uh, bought a lot of rental properties back then. Most of my rental properties to this day have mortgages that are, you know, six and a half to seven and a half percent. My perspective, interest rates are normal. Guys, this is normal. Okay, 3% interest rates, that's not normal. When, prior to a few years ago, when was the last time we had 3% interest rates? Never! It never happened! It didn't happen in your grandparents' time and your grandparents' parents' time. Right? When will we next have 3% mortgages? I seriously doubt you will ever see it again in your lifetime, in your kid's lifetime, in your kid's kid's lifetime. Now, who knows? We don't know. Right? We don't know. Nobody knows right, what's going to happen. But I would say the world and the economic scenarios and what would have to happen to make 3% mortgages happen, I don't know if I want to live on that planet, okay? So I don't. I hope it never happens, right? I don't expect it's ever going to happen. Uh, I would say, perspective, 20-year investor, interest rates are normal. This is normal. And I have to tell you, I personally, I like normal. I like normal. I don't like investing in abnormal. Because when things are abnormal, you know, things work and then they don't work. And, you know, it's like, I'll give you an example. I, I do commercial, I do residential. We, we, we do all kinds of commercial, right? Storage and mobile home parks and, and, and apartment buildings. We, we do apartment buildings. And like three or four years ago, people were buying these apartment buildings and it was hyper competitive. So they were paying top dollar. When things are hyper competitive, people pay top dollar, right? And, and then, you know, they were, so they were buying them at top price, right? And, and they were putting these packages together uh, that only worked with 3% mortgages. 
right? Because you could, you, if you could borrow 80%, you could, you could afford to pay back the loan, the SCR loans, right? If 3% mortgages, the numbers worked. But here's the thing about commercial real estate. These are not 30-year mortgages. Commercial loans tend to be five-year mortgages, not 30-year mortgages, they tend to be five-year mortgages, right? Commercial syndications tend to be five-year deals. Nobody wants to invest in something for 30 years, right? In individuals, right? Uh, I might put my money in something for five years, but not 30 years. So these deals are constantly turning over, like every five years. And you know, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, famous saying, right? I don't, puck to where the, uh, I don't skate to where the puck is, I skate to where the puck is going. So if you're buying a commercial property, you have to ask yourself the question, what's the world going to look like in five years when I have to sell or refinance this thing? Well, if I bought this thing with a deal that only worked with a 3% mortgage, do I believe five years from now we're still going to have a 3% mortgage? This never happened before in the last 100 years. I would say that was not normal. And expecting that something that had never happened before would continue to happen, that was very optimistic and maybe foolishly optimistic. So as a consequence, a lot of the people that bought those apartment buildings, right, now they're either selling or refinancing, and now you can't borrow 3%. It's, it's seven or so, right? And you can't borrow 80%. You can only borrow maybe 65 or 70%. So the numbers don't work, not even close. And the big word in commercial is cash call. You know what a cash call is? So you invest in something, and they have to refinance it, but they can't borrow as much, and the money's more expensive, so they gotta get all the investors to throw more money into the deal to keep the deal going, or else the deal goes under, right? And that's very common right now, because now we're back to normal, and we were in abnormal. So if you're buying a commercial property today, the question you need to ask is, what do we think it's gonna look five years from now? Do I believe in five years that interest rates will be 7%? I think that's a pretty good bet. Could be a little less, could be around that, could be a little more, but it's gonna be in the ballpark because that's normal, right? And I like normal. Personally, I love normal. So I, I would say my perspective is interest rates are normal, but they certainly have gone up, that's true, compared to what they were. So let's talk about that. When interest rates go up, what happens to home prices? Does it make home prices go up or does it make home prices go down? What do you think? Who thinks when interest rates go up, home prices go down? Who would say that? Who thinks when interest rates go up, home prices go up? Who would say that? Oh, look, we got a little mix. Interesting. Well, I would say when interest rates go up, here's what it does to home prices. It pushes up and down at the same time. There's things pushing up and there's things pushing down that are offsetting each other. Now, I'll show you an interesting chart just to give you some hints. But I'm going to tell you, I, I will tell you, Real estate doesn't really care about interest rates. Real estate doesn't really care about the economy. Real estate cares about two things, supply and demand. It's all about supply and demand. Only in as much as the economy or interest rates affect supply and demand will it affect real estate. Right? And, and, and there is some effect, but not as much as you think. Like in, in, in 2000, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The banks came up with this idea. They called it subprime lending. Remember that? Instead of requiring people to have jobs and credit and income to get a loan, they had to fog a mirror held under their nose to get a loan. That was the lending application process in 2005. In 2007, surprise, surprise, all the banks went bankrupt. Remember that? But they were too big to fail. The government actually changed the definition in 2007 of bankruptcy. Do you know that? The mark-to-market -market stuff. That was just playing with bankruptcy. But the, the, by any real definition, they went bankrupt. But they were too big to fail, so we bailed them out. Right? But, but here's what happened. 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? money was easy. Anybody could get a loan. Everybody could get a loan. If you wanted to get a loan, stated income was all they did. Bob, do you have enough money to pay us back if we loan you this money? Yes, I do. Load approved. That was it. No dock load. It was the stupidest thing ever. So the builders built houses out over the horizon in every direction. They built bazillions of houses. And what they do with all that inventory, all those houses, they sold them to everybody because everybody could get a loan. They just, you just said you could get a loan and they'd give you a loan. So they built bazillions of houses and then they gave bazillions of loans and everybody got a loan, and everybody got a home and everything was great until 2008 and then boom, the banks went bankrupt and lending just hit a wall. It was like a train hitting a wall. It didn't slow down, it just boom, stopped. And all of a sudden we had all this supply Right, and the demand 
fell off a cliff. And when you have a ton of supply, no more demand, what happens to real estate? Ooh, crash, crash. Now, after the banks got bailed out, eventually they got back into the business of lending. And all these years later, today, what do you have to do to get a loan? Turn over your firstborn, fill in a 1900 page application, submit blood samples, a lot. Money got cheap, but it never got easy. It never got easy again. It got cheap, but it never got easy. And consequently, because money never got easy, it's been kind of hard to get, right? Builders have not been building enough houses. In fact, on a national basis, we are now suffering from what is called a housing shortage. How many of people have heard that? We're in a housing shortage. What does that mean? That means we don't have enough houses because everybody's got to live somewhere. Right? And on a national level, we have six million fewer houses than we need for all the people that need a place to live. So we have a housing shortage and we don't have enough supply to meet the demand that pushes prices up. That pushes prices up. So that's something pushing prices up, housing shortage. There's some other things pushing prices up. We raised interest rates. Now, why do we raise interest rates? To combat what? Inflation. inflation. Now, most people, when they talk about inflation, they talk about it in negative terms. Inflation is bad. We have to stop inflation, trample out inflation. Personally, I disagree. I personally love inflation. I just have another name for it. I call it appreciation. Yeah, because when all of your wealth is in, in, in assets, because when there's inflation, what happens to assets? They go up, right? So, so yeah, real estate's gone way up, right? That's called inflation, i.e. appreciation. It's awesome if you, if you own a lot of real estate. Man, how many of you have owned a house for the last three years? Yeah, you're a lot richer than you were before, aren't you? Yeah, nice. What if you had 20? What if you had 50? What if you had 200? Then how much richer would you be? Think about that. You can't go back. Don't we wish you could go back? When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. When's the second best time to plant a tree? That would be today. For all you think real estate's expensive compared to like 20 years ago, that's true. Real estate's expensive compared to 20 years ago. Too bad you can't go back 20 years ago. You can't. What do you think they're gonna say about real estate today 20 years from now? Oh my God. You could buy a house in Dallas for only half a million dollars? Holy crap. I can't believe how cheap that was. Yeah, can't go back. Now's the time that is gonna determine how wealthy you are 20 years from now. Right now, you're making decisions that will determine what your life looks like 20 years from now, right? What, what, are, what are the decisions gonna be? You can't go back and do anything you want going forward. So yeah, um, money got hard to get. We have a housing shortage, pushing prices up, right? Inflation, pushing prices up. But to battle inflation, we raised, rose interest rates, went up, right? Making mortgages less affordable, meaning fewer people can afford, so demand has gone down, right? So that's pushing prices down. So we got things pushing prices up, we got other things pushing prices down, right? So there's different forces at play here, right? People just say interest rates make houses less expensive, you're only looking at one thing. Right, so there's things pushing up and there's other things pushing down. Um, by the way, and I'll, and I'll show you when you put it all in a blender and kick it out the other end what, what, where, where we are. But this is an interesting chart. This is uh, median home prices versus interest rates going all the way back to 1975. From 1975 to 1981, interest rates on mortgages got all the way up to, there it is, 18%. 18%. And when interest rates went up, what happened to median home prices? They actually went up. And when interest rates came down, what happened to median home prices? They actually went up. And when interest rates went up and down, up and down, up and down, what happened to home prices? They actually went up. Now there's some bubbles here. There's that little 2008, 9, 10 bubble, right? There's some little bubbles here. And the volume changes when, 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 when houses are less affordable, fewer buyers, fewer sellers. But the prices don't change like you might think they do. So we got things pushing the market up, we got things pushing the market down. And when you take all that into consideration, where is the market now? And I will tell you the market is flat. At least it's been flat for the last year, year and a half. 
Now the volume is down. So let's start by taking a look at uh, last year. Last year, year over year, prices just flattened out. 2020 prices went up, 2021 they went up a lot, 2022 they went up some more, 2023 flat. Flat as Texas is flat. Now the volume went down, fewer buyers, fewer sellers. And right, we'll talk about the mix has changed too. So we'll talk about the mix. So there's fewer buyers, fewer sellers, but prices are flat. Now I will tell you, something's happened over just the last quarter. And uh, for the first time a year, year and a half, depending on what market you're looking at, uh, both sales volume and prices are going up. They flattened out after going up, 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 up. They flattened out for a long time. And just within the last quarter, they're starting to tick up and the volume is starting to tick up and the inventory is falling. So something seemingly has happened over the last quarter. Now, all the markets are a little different. We'll dive into the different markets, but I'll first start with the Texas Roundup. The average price house in the state of Texas, 404,000, up 3.5%, a little bit. Median price house in Texas, 334, up 3%. Now, I would say the most important uh, number on this chart is this one here, months of inventory, months of inventory. What is months of inventory? This is what you, if you really want to see where the market's going, you look at months of inventory. What is months of inventory? Well, there's a couple of ways to explain it. But one way to explain it is if you took, um, if you, you, you take all the houses that are for sale in the MLS, you don't add any more houses for sale. You just take what you got, and you, you just sell it until it's sold out. How long would it take before we're out of houses completely if you don't add any more to the market? And the answer is 3.6 months. Now, to put that into perspective, and that's also the average amount of time to sell a house, some more, some less, but the average is 3.6. Now, to put that into perspective, they say if there's less than six months of inventory, you have a seller's market. If there's more than six months of inventory, you have a buyer's market. If there's right around six months of inventory, you have a neutral market. We are in a pretty strong seller's market. Now perspective, let's talk about perspective. A year ago, we had 2.6 months of inventory. We had a crazy hot market. So we went from crazy hot to hot. Some people will say the market's down. Well, it's down compared to a year ago, that's true. But compared to the historical average, it's really pretty hot. And that's just perspective. That's just perspective. Active listings are up a bit. That's why there's more inventory than there was. Closed sales. Now, this is the thing that's changed. For the first time in over a year, closed sales is actually up. So closed sales was going down, 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 down. The volume was going. And then suddenly, something's happened where the volume has picked up. Going back the last three years, 2021, real estate was on fire, up 18%. 2022, up another 10.7%. 2023, flat. Went up, 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 and then it just flattened out, and it just stayed flat, 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 until about a quarter ago. Now, looking into some of the different cities, starting with Houston. Houston, the average price is 400000 up 4%, about the same as Texas. Median price, 330 up 3%, about the same as Texas. Uh, closed sales is up, pending sales is up. So this is something new. All of a sudden it's been down, 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 down. For the first time it is up. Months of inventory, 3.4. Pretty good market, right? Not as good as a year ago, but pretty good by any standard. Going back uh, three years, 2021, prices went up 16%. 2022, they went up another 10%. 2023, flat. Houston is just flat. All right, let's talk, oh, leases, we can jump over and look at the lease data. Lease listings up a little bit. This mostly has to do with inventory, new inventory coming on the market. Lease prices are up 2.5%, right, which is kind of interesting. Uh, new list lease listings are up about 5%. Okay, Dallas, let's talk about Dallas, DFW. DFW, the average price house, second most expensive market in Texas, by the way, the average price house in DFW, $485,000, up 3%. Median price in Dallas, $394, up uh, 2%. Uh, Dallas has three months of inventory. It is the hottest market in Texas. And here's something interesting. Now, not as hot as it was a year ago. A year ago is two months of inventory, but three months of inventory is a hot market. 
Now, I will say um, something about Dallas. I don't know why this is the case. I don't, we've, been, we've been tracking this for 20 years. For some reason, maybe somebody here knows the answer, for some reason, Dallas has always been the bellwether of Texas. I don't know why. It's always the first. First to go up, first to go down. If you want to kind of get an idea where Texas is going, you look at Dallas first. I have no idea why. Some mix of how the economy and whatever works in Dallas, it's always been the bellwether. And there's certain things you look at if you want to predict the future. Certainly, you look at inventory. So Dallas had the first market where inventory started to, to, to decline. So that's interesting. Uh, and, and that's one of the things. And Dallas always precedes the other markets. I don't know why. And there's certain things you look at if you want to predict the future, like condominiums always precede houses. We call condominiums the canary in the coal mine. The condo, when the condo market is always the first thing to go, the last thing to come back. And you know, if condos are hot, man, everything is hot. If the condo market is hot, you, if you can sell a condo, you can sell anything. Right? Everything's hot when condo, land, rural, everything. You know, condos is the last thing to come back and the first thing to go. So you look at condo inventory, and then you look at house inventory, and then you look at, at, at Dallas, because Dallas always moves before the other markets. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, three months of inventory. Leases up 11%, lease prices up 2%, pending sales up 3%, closed sales flat, and that's only because it, it was the first to go up. And um, going back uh, three years, 2021, Dallas was up 20% in one year. 2022 up another 15%, 2023 flattened out, up, up 1%, we'll just call that flat. So yeah, Dallas is a pretty hot market. Not as hot as it was a year ago, but it's a pretty hot market and it seems to be moving in the hotter direction because the inventory has been falling for the last few months. Austin, let's talk about Austin. Austin is an outlier and I'm gonna explain why. First of all, the average price house in Austin, Texas is $553,000, average, up 3%. This is not a typo. We did a little research, try to figure this out. Turns out Austin is actually Latin for San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk moved to Austin and Meta and Facebook and, and Apple and Samsung and all these high-tech companies, you know, moved in, set up shop, expanded, brought in all their, you know, multi-six-figure uh, employees, and Austin just took off like a little rocket ship. And here's why Austin is an outlier, okay? Uh, 3.2 months of inventory, pretty strong market. Uh, here's, here's the outlier. In 2021 in Austin, Texas, prices went up 29.3% in one year. That's the outlier. In 2021 in Austin, Texas, there was 0.4 months of inventory, less than two weeks of inventory. It was insane. In 2021 in Austin, Texas, somebody would put a house for sale in the market, they'd get 11 offers in a weekend. One of them would win, 10 would lose. The 10 people whose offer was not accepted, they'd put their offer on a second house. They got 10 offers in a weekend. One of them would win and 10 would lose. And people were doing this over and over and over again, losing over and over and over again. And after a while, the buyers got so mad at the realtors, they start screaming at the realtors, you keep giving me bad advice, I keep getting outbid, what do you have to do? I need a house to live in, what do you have to do to buy a house? And in 2021, I'll tell you what you had to do, in 2021, it was normal in that freakishly abnormal market. In 2021, it was normal for people to buy houses at five to 10% above appraised value. That was normal. Now, by the way, the bank will not let you do that. Did you know that? You can't buy a house with a bank loan for above appraised value. All the money for the loan plus the down payment can only go up to the appraised value, not a penny more. If you want to pay more, you have to bring extra money to the closing on top of the down payment and the loan. And it was normal in that abnormal year till 2021 for people to buy houses at 5 to 10% above appraised value, arguably above what they were worth. 2022, it didn't get much better, right? Prices went up another 10.4%. And then 2023, correction, went down 8%. So if you're in Dallas, prices went up 30% and flattened out. 
Okay, if you're in Austin, prices went up 40% and came down 10 and flattened out. They both went up 30, but it's perspective. Bought a house a year ago, you were like, oh, it went down, right? Bought a house three years ago, went up 30%, right? So depending on where you bought your house, you'd have the exact same experience, whether you're in Austin, Dallas, Houston, or San Antonio, but it's perspective, but that was the outlier. Inventory's been falling 3.2 months. Uh, leases are up, lease prices are up a little bit. Uh, pending sales uh, up for the last uh, first time in a year and a half. San Antonio is the most affordable city, major city in Texas, average price house, 349. It's down a little bit. Now, interestingly enough, just like uh, Dallas is the bellwether, for some reason, San Antonio is the lagger. It's the last market to move. I don't know why. I, I, it's been following this for years. Median price down 3%. I mean, it's not down much, but a little bit of down. A uh, bunch of inventory a little higher than the other markets. Um, 2021, San Antonio was up 15, 16% one year, 2022 up another 12%, 2023 flat. Well, technically down 2%, which we'll just call flat. 